But let's jump right into the, the, the Google Air platform here. And as of 3.6 release, we've now introduced in file server is now a new thing and the OS manager. So, you know, how is the process that we go on the file server is, you know, we, on a per org base, organization basis, we can give access to these file servers that are distributed. So in this case here, I go to system settings, I go to organizations, OS management, and for the active organization that I have selected, in this case is my Google organization, I have added um, a file server. So with this file server, now I can specify the ports and services to be used um, that I want to use to, to perform these file transfers. And again, these ports are open only at the time of the transfer that is being executed. Um, these ports are shut down otherwise and you will not be able to, to scan or be able to connect to this, uh, to, this communicate, uh, to these ports unless you're doing a file transfer on that device. Um, down here, we have a section to, to um, enable catalogs. And with catalogs, essentially, uh, is where architects can test and validate their images in the environment, right? So you have your... You have your environment before you push anything in your production, you have to validate an image. So you use Glueware to push those images and validate it in your lab. And as you upgrade in your devices and hey, everything seems to be working okay, um, the commands haven't changed, so on and so forth, then you can approve those messages and create those messages as part of a catalog. And depending on the level of users that you set your catalog to, in this case here, I have a catalog editor set to write admin. And any, and I set my options to use catalog is for all users that are subordinate roles or essentially all users that have a less permission than a write admin, they must use a catalog. So what, what that means is if, if my role falls within a system developer, a system admin, um, I have the options to use a catalog or simply pick from any images that has been uploaded on the file server. However, if a user is you know, of a read-only or operations administrator, um, they, they are not able to pick any images that are available in the file server. They're only able to pick images that have been approved and have been put in catalogs for the specific platforms. And then additionally down here, we have a plan execution. And we've found that you know it depends on the user and it depends on the use case. In some cases, it's possible that you prefer to upgrade your devices in a linear job, meaning that you know, hey, I decide to upgrade 20 devices, and Glueware is going to perform this execution one at a time, and it's going to keep track of the you know whether it's failure rates and success rates, and if you want to abort after a specific percentage, you can opt to do so. Um, but in the, most of the cases, we found that our users want to be able to tackle more devices at the same time as they have a, a maintenance window. Uh, the network is scheduled, it's okay to be down, so they can bring down more devices at the same time. Um, so that's, you know, and that's once this, this system is set up here, then the next step is to jump into the file server. I'll go ahead and I'll jump into that. And in the file server is where I maintain the inventory of my images. Uh, oh, within, the, within my images here, I can create new directories. So I can create new directories and put images under, you know, different or different images and within, within each folder to organize these images according um, to them. Let's see, if I want to upload an image, it's as simple as, you know, hey, I, I can select. I want to upload an image. I want to specify some ASA images here. If you know it's uploading to the root, let's see. There we go. I get to specify what type of image it is and whether I want to put these images under a specific catalog. In this case, I don't want to assign them to a catalog. I just want to go ahead and start uploading. So Glueware is go ahead and it's going to upload these images. And once they're done uploading, right, and you can see the status is here, they will be synced 
to the file servers that are distributed in, within the different regions or what, however you, they are distributed. So in this case, I have some images that are already synced, have been uploaded, some images that are syncing. Um, and once those images are synced, they'll be available for me to use. So essentially the file server, it's as, it's as simple as uploading the different images and the images will be, well now we use our sync to sync those images to the different file servers. Once that process is done, now we get to jump into the OS manager application itself. And in the OS manager is where we can create catalogs, we can create upgrade plans, so on and so forth, and to be able to execute those. So in this case here, um, I have created some catalogs for different types of devices. And with those catalogs, I'm just going to open one up here. Um, I can select, I can create a catalog on a per device basis. And I can specify um, if you, you know, you, the only thing you must be familiar with is regular expression. And, you know, with the regular expression, we match on a device SKU number. So in this case, I'm looking for, hey, any SKU number that begins with SRX, and then there is some type of digit um, after, then it's going to match whatever devices in my inventory will be populated here. And then based on the images that are available in my, in my file servers, I can select and assign um, to this catalog. So if I look at a different device here, uh, I'll look at ISR 4300. Hey, I have multiple regular expressions, multiple SKU numbers that can match, and any device in my inventory that matches that will be added. Same thing with the images. So once catalogs are created, um, I know another view here is the devices that are listed in OS upgrade. This is, these are the devices that are currently supported for the OS upgrade application. As we're quickly uh, upgrading and adding support to new vendor and platforms. And as we have different applications within Glueware, we may start out, if we start supporting a new vendor, we may start out supporting, you know, hey, today we're able to discover this new device. We can add to our inventory. We can discover everything about it. And then, you know, we are quickly adding fe more features to be able to support those devices or platforms um, within all of the additional Blu-ray applications, whether that's been to being able to add and, and or put configurations using config modeling, um, which is one of, the, one of our other applications, uh, doing config drifts and audit, which is being able to, to catch any time a configuration changes, to being able to audit your configuration for any changes or for any specific, specific items that you're looking for, and of course, OS Manager. Uh, and that's to being able to upgrade your devices. In this case here, um, I may have, it is possible that in my inventory device manager, I have more devices than the 19 that are being listed here. And the reason that the 19 are being listed here um, is because these are the devices that are supported by Google and that's automatically populated. So once I have created, you know, I, I've uploaded my images, I've created my catalog with my images, um, the next step is to create uh, an upgrade plan. An upgrade plan, these are intended to be, you know, a single use plan so that, you know, we can maintain a history for specific actions. And it could be that today I need to upgrade this set of devices. Um, I specify a, 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 a ticket order, a ServiceNow ticket, or a remedy or any type of outside, you know, ticketing system that you may use, and this is the action that I want to do. So as we create these plans, I can, you know, I, I select the type of plan that I want to do, whether I want to do a transfer only, whether I want to deploy the new image on a device which is doing the transfer and doing the upgrade itself, um, and uh, and additionally as well. I can select to take, you know, snapshots. And this is taking advantage of a different application within our system is to be able to take a snapshot on that different application and then do comparisons so that you can see on a side-to-side -side basis or what are the changes in the configuration. So over here, I have the options to take a snapshot, you know, 
prior to the upgrade, post the upgrade, um, post the upgrade and mark as a default if you want, or to do a pre and post so that you can see, you know, what did the configuration look like before? What did the configuration look like after? And easily to be able to identify any changes in commands and so forth. So in this case here, once I select the devices, they're going to be listed, grouped by SKU numbers. And as this is the, the first version, right, uh, of uh, OS Manager, um, you know, that was moved from OS Upgrade. Um, in, in this version, we currently have opted to uh, expose, you know, let's group devices by the SKU number. Um, but this fields here can be filled in based on any information that is figured out, anything that is already that has already been discovered about this device, you know, we can expose this to group by the, you know, devices that are running a specific OS version, devices that are that match this specific platform, this specific series, devices, you know, group devices by vendor. So this can be easily added. It's simply typing the column, and then that column will be populated here. So once I've selected the devices, the next step is to pick, you know, for each type of device, what are the images that I want to select? In this case, for this 9500 series, um, I already have one selected, but essentially I get, this is the option to where I get to pick, hey, let's make the images available only from catalog or any of the images available within the file system. In this case, my user, uh, I have enough privileges that I can do either or, but if I was a user that could only do catalogs, this would be the only option, and I would not have an option to pick from any other images. All right, so this is where you have, hey, this image has been approved, has been validated, has been tested. Um, it's been working in our lab for the past two months. Now we are okay with pushing it to production, so therefore the image has been pushed to, to the catalog. So let me just back out here. So once I have completed and selected, you know, I can do the same thing for this device. Once I have completed and selected the images that I want to upgrade to, then the plan is ready to be validated. And as you can see, I'm not ready to, to, do, uh, to, do a, 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 to run the OS upgrade until this plan has been validated. Now this validation plan is identifying the health of the devices, making sure the device, what the device is in the stack, right? Hey, does the stack look work okay? Or is the image, everything is communication with the file server okay? And it's, it's, it's doing you know, additional checks um, before we proceed with the upgrade. So in this case here, the upgrade is completed, no errors detected. So I'm gonna go back and now I have the option Hey, once this has been validated, and this is the status of my plan, and I can either schedule it or run now, right? So I'll go ahead and do a run now for this upgrade. And while that's running, you know, I'll touch on one that I've already ran and kind of show and discuss over the logs, right? Um, what, what are some of the steps? And you can see the steps that the glueware is taking. Right, and we can follow the logs for those devices. Um, but I want to discuss one that has already been completed here. That way, that I can talk more and show all of the details that go in the log. But as Glueware touches each device, there is a set of steps that are being done, and we keep the logs for you know we have the logs for each plan, and then within the logs for each plan, we have the logs for each device. Right. And that's from the minute that Glueware logs into a device, all of the commands that we're executing, whether we're identifying, detecting the device type, um, we're detecting whether the device, you know, any modes that the device is running on, and, uh, uh, you know, and determining the type of upgrade that the device needs. In some cases, we always try to, we always code in, we always try to automate based on the vendor recommendation upgrade path. Um, whether the device in, is in bundle mode or install mode, we do what the vendor suggests for that specific platform. Um, but we, the, the system automatically 
or the platform automatically determines on what to do, right? On which one to do and what's the best method. So in this case here, the device is doing an initial detection. It's making sure that everything is okay, right? It's checking the state um, of, of my stack there. And, you know, it's re returning all of the information that has found. We're able to detect, you know, the power modules, serial numbers, where they're located, so on and so forth. And, you know, and it, at the same time, we are trying to, to see what the device is capable of. We're trying to determine whether the device doesn't have a running, you know, has the configure, is, is the startup configuration different from the running configuration, right? So we're checking for things like that before we, we do an upgrade. And an example of that, and if I bring up this one here, that I, I intentionally created a failing point um, to show how when the configuration is in a non-saved state, right, we make sure that, hey, Glue Air will go ahead and stop that. So that we are not upgrading the device and any configuration that was made will now, will no longer be, um, you know, the, that configuration was lost or it could possibly um, bring the device offline. So as the file transfer, you know, as everything, the, the health checks is, is made okay, the system does, you know, identify boot statements. In the case where the system is used um, an install mode, right? We check the boot statement with the packages.com file. We identify the files that are referenced within the packages.com file, and we verify to make sure that they actually exist in the file system, right? To before we are making any changes, and you know the system is not being rebooted with missing files. Um, but the system is checking the, you know, whether there's enough storage. If there's enough storage. Do we need to clean up the file system, right? So we do a file system cleanup prior to the install, and you see in here the system is checking, making sure that all those files are there. It, it checked, you know, the stack one. It's checking it's stack two here, and it's doing the same process. It will do the same process on however many devices that are uh, are a member of that stack. And of course, you know, we try to do the recommended plan, the recommended install. Um, to use the command that will install all, right? So that it installs in one device and then it's doing the automated copy to install from device to device. Um, but additionally, one, of the, one other thing that I wanted to highlight here that we do is we do put a, a you know, a, um, essentially a lock file in the system um, to make sure that, you know, if you're an organization and it's possible that you have multiple Blueware engines or it's possible you have different teams that can manage the same device. And we want to make sure that you don't, you're not running an upgrade on that device at the same time. Therefore, we add this additional file that will check on that. And, in, and Blueware is always checking for that file. And it's just a simple text file with some text in it. And it's removed at, at the end of it. But once that's done, then it's a matter of, okay, you know, we're gonna initiate the file transfer. Let's, let's identify whether the, the file is there or not. Um, we do a file cleanup. So for any images, you know, for, if the image is already in the flash, we see that we create a Blueware OS folder. We'll move that file to the Blueware OS folder. We'll do the cleanup so that we're not losing that file that will be removed during the cleanup. Um, once the cleanup is done, we will go and identify the, the file that needs to be transferred. We know, we'll do the file copy, right, which will be down here. And after the file copy, then we perform the install in all members. Once the install is complete, then we'll issue the reload command to, for the device. And of course, you know, it's setting the correct boot statements. It's making sure that it's set the config register. Right, so it's setting all of the correct, uh, the uh, all of the correct uh, settings that need to be set, and checking everything before it's reloading your device. And of course, and that's what you're seeing down here, right? So the device doesn't have any reload. We're gonna do the reload. Let's see, install.
So this is the reload part where the system is reloading the device and it waits for the device to come back up. And then once the device comes back up, it verifies that, hey, is this the version that I intended to upgrade to? And only at that time, it will run the same set of commands that we ran before to identify the platform. Is everything healthy? Any additional pre-post health check commands um, that needs to be run, compare that data that needs to be sent. And of course, you know, whether I remove that lock, uh, the lock command that was sent earlier. All right, so this is one that was completed. Um, we have, you know, there's another one here that was up, upgraded an ISR. And if needed, we can check progress on the upgrade that we're currently running on here. And you just see that one of them is already in a re reboot and waiting for the device to come back up, while the other one is still, you know, it's tracking the, the package file transfer, so on and so forth. All right. So, and of course, if there is, a, in the case of a failure, you know, like this, in the case of a, a, a failed upgrade for a device, there is always an option to create an OS plan from failures. So meaning that, hey, for my devices that did not fail, I want to go ahead and try to troubleshoot it, or I need to go ahead and upgrade that device. Um, or in this specific case for this device, it had a, a, a configuration that was in an unsaved state. Um, so I was able to go on the device to go ahead and save it, verify that everything needed to be there. And I say, okay, now I need to go, you know, create a new plan for my failures. And from, from that point on, again, I, get, I can pick the image that's available in my inventory for the, or for my catalog for this type, specific type of platforms. Hit save. And then at that point, I'll be able to go and validate it. And that concludes the, the, the demo for OS Manager.